and welcome everyone. I'm Colin Smith, and we're going to have a quick look at Creative Suite CS6 and After Effects Premiere Pro in a brand new product called Speedgrade. We're here in After Effects. CS6 got brand new features in here, the ability to track things in 3D. So here is a, a clip. I'm going to type in 3D camera tracker, drop this on here. It's going to track these objects in three dimensional space. This is a two dimensional file, but we want three dimensions pulled out of this so we can put something on here. And we can see up here it's tracking, time remaining, 18 seconds, and it will understand um, and pull three dimensional data out of a two dimensional file. Well, what can we do with that? We can attach something and move it in 3D. Once it's finished analyzing. So, you see all these little points? All the points now are three dimensional data. So we can attach something in here. So I can choose to create text, solid, null, shadow catcher. So I'll create some text inside here. Select that text. Center that. And let's make that smaller. And this is the bone crusher. Select that, make that smaller. And let's take this, make that black, condensed, extra black. Uh, bone. Okay. So now this is in 3D, so I can move this around. Whoops, not that. Move this around on here in 3D. Move that up. And now as I move in, it's actual in 3D. So I can turn the I can turn on motion blur on this now. So we're going right inside there. So 3D, 3D objects, and believe it or not, we can also take that and we can extrude it into 3D. So real three-dimensional shapes, a 3D ray tracer now inside After Effects for the first time, real 3D, tracking 3D, all this stuff inside After Effects. All right, let's jump to Premiere Pro. What's new? What's new, look at how beautiful it is. It's gorgeous, brand new interface, everything's beautiful. Now your, your images are huge, your video clips are huge. No longer is it tiny with lots of controls. We threw the controls away and made it beautiful. What about looking at your files? Well, we can look at our files like this way, but isn't it better to look at them like this with giant thumbnails that you can scrub so everything is live and scrubbable files. If I click inside here, I can now set in and out points from any of these points too. So now your media is looking beautiful wherever you are. Okay, so we have four different videos in one. I wanna create a color correction look on four videos. What do I have to do? I have to do one at a time. Or, well, why don't we go grab a new, brand new adjustment layer. So you can create for the first time. Yeah, you see where I'm going with this. Just like, Just like Photoshop. So I drag this adjustment layer on here, drag that out. And now we go to our effects, our brand new three-way color corrector. Drag that on here, go to my controls, dang these. And now four different clips, I'm changing the color at the same time. And you'll notice that this will not stop playback. So the playback keeps going even though I'm adding color correction and I have four layers and it just keeps playing back. In fact, you can go to other applications or go to the desktop, Premiere Pro will still be playing the whole time. We have to now tell Premiere Pro to stop playing because it will just keep on playing each time. All right, um, multicam. Trying to do multicam in the past was more than four cameras. We now have unlimited cameras. So I'm going to shift 
And look at how easy it is to make a multicam. Select all of your clips, create a multicam. You can sync the in and out points or time code. I'm going to leave this as 111 so I know where it is. Create a new sequence. And now I'll open up my multicam window. There's nine cameras. We can have it as many as you want. So there's my cut, there is my look, and all of my looks inside here. So before, if we had a multicam and th this clip here, we wanted to change that clip in the previous version of Premiere Pro, you had to make sure you were on an edit point, the beginning, or else it would cut the clip. That's not people want. They just want, they want to keep the timing they just want to change the clip. So now when I have that clip over here and I choose a different clip, it flips the whole clip for me. Yay! Not cut. Not cut. If I hold down Alt, it will cut it. So depending on how you want it, right? Yeah. So let's jump into the last application, which we can get to from... Oh. Oh, of course. Thank you. Warp stabilizer. Thank you very much. So... Here we've got shaky footage. So we can go to our effects. The warp stabilizer is now inside Premiere Pro. There it is. Um, and I think someone already added it to this one. So we've already turned this on. There's our original clip. And this is the warp stabilizer. Now. We also have full screen mode real full screen control tilt full screen yay so there's our motion stabilized turn that off turn it on and last up we can send this to speed grade so a brand new application Sent to speed grade for uh, color grading, color correction. This will take your timeline, create a bunch of DPX files, and then send that out to speed grade. And here we are in speed grade. Big, gorgeous thumbnails, scrubbability in here. Works with red files, Airy Raw, um, Airy Alexa, Phantom, silicon imaging. And uh, once we bring these in, we can start to edit it. Full scopes control, unlimited uh, control, Amazing, easy to use controls in here for changing our Luma and Chroma on here. And we can right click. So even if you have an inexpensive wheel mouse, right click inside here, it creates a virtual trackball. So as I move this around, I'm changing the overall Chroma. And then I use the, sc the scroll wheel, I'm changing the Luma of that. We can create secondaries. So if I want to select his face and uh, change that, create a secondary, click on the eyedropper, and then measure the color in his face. So I'm down, I'm up there now, clicking and dragging in his face. Can control, soften that. Denoise, and now watch his face. Changing that secondary, and I can go change that, hold the zero key, go back to the original file at any time. We can also have the most amazing mask tool in here. So I'm gonna create, darken this video. Have a look at this. This is the mask widget. Watch this. I'll drag this up. Changes the mask. Change the mask width. Rotate the mask. Start moving the dials on that and watch the mask. 
Yeah. And watch. And the wheel and the and the wheels. Look on. And I can click on those points. I can add and control points and draw a mask. Not with that. For that, I need specific control. So a draw a mask, a planar tracker, so it can track the object. And you can make changes to this at any time, any way you want. Make a key for one point. Yes. Keyframe the whole thing or keyframe everything. Make that bigger, make the vignette bigger. Come back in here, and we go to where we change that color. So there's my outside color. I could do something like take the saturation down, and this is on its own layer. So I can turn this on and off. I can save these looks. So here is a look I applied earlier. I can save these looks, and we can export these looks out as different formats so we can go out to other professional color grading applications. Um, we can also use effects on a layer with an opacity slider. All of this together in the brand new Adobe Creative Suite CS6. Check this out.